but you know oh, there's just the nothing appetizer. better than Tom Brady talk, okay, oh, on a boy. Thursday oh, in the yeah, offseason, okay. right? All right, yeah. so, I, I, you know, again, we've talked about this a little, uh, but I, I haven't really heard your State of the Union. You know, yeah. I want to hear your State of the Union here with Tom Brady, what you would be thinking, the rumors that are involved here as far as the Titans, the 49ers, any other teams to look at there, and just kind of what's your thought on the, the overall Brady free agency And there, thing. there was news, too. I mean, the news that just came out that, that Brady and Belichick talked for, I think, the first time. This is yes, Tom Curran from right, right, Sports right. Boston. That they talked and that uh, it didn't nothing go well. Happened. Sure, it was, it was nothing, shocker. Yeah, yeah so. Belichick uh, talked business and in a business tone about business. Shocker. Yeah, yeah. I'm really surprised by that. But Yeah, it wasn't. It, it didn't get into – the emotion, oh, we've done this together, Tom. Let's keep it together, I'm mm. sure. Right. Well, first off, tell people of that. Like, Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick are not going to do that, right? So just explain that to people, how they operate. Well, yeah, now, Bill was a little bit not quite, you know, uh, cut and dry like Bill Belichick is. Right, okay. Now, Parcells, sometimes emotions did get in the way. Mm. Maybe not with somebody like Tom Brady or, you know, this or that, but some other guys who were just fringe players – who just were, just gave it gave it their all and everything, and he would really openly root for them right. to make the team. Right. And if it was in, when in doubt, they made the team. Yeah. So that was a little bit of a difference between the two, but yeah, it was business. Uh, it, Parcells was not afraid to make changes after he won the Super Bowl. He would come to me and you go, "Hey, Sims, your boy. I'm not going to name the names. Your boy. You better get talk to him. He's. I, I don't know if we're even going to keep him. I said, "Damn, Bill, we just won the Super Bowl with him." <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm telling you. And then I started watching him. Yeah. And I went, oh, my God. Yeah. Coach is right. Right. It is over. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but so, I, I, you're right. Nothing happened. I think nothing's going to happen until the cap is settled and free agency starts and all that, and we'll see what's out there. Who's going to make a move? You said it this morning. I heard you. I'm at, Tom Brady's not going to go to the Las Vegas Raiders and, yeah. you know, whatever be have no chance of going to the super bowl right. two teams and i think it's you guys have already said it it's got to be the tennessee titans or the san francisco 49ers those yeah. are the two teams that i can legitimately say wow they do have a chance to go to the super bowl right i mean yeah is there even and in, is there another team in the mix that you know you would even think you know, my, my big thing is, realistically, what other teams are there that you could really pin it to? You know, again, like to, to what my dad just kind of echoed there. None. Yeah, none, right? It's really none. those two. And then, of course, and you know, no, I no would even argue this. Yeah. I don't care what people, you know, the narrative's never going to change. It just doesn't. People right. are, I, I'm not, I was getting ready to say people or something else, but, um, you know, Ryan Tannehill is a talent. Right. Let's get over, oh, well, you know, in Miami, they didn't win. Shut up. Yeah. Holy carumba. Yeah. Now, you know, once you have that great success and we put you on the pedestal, you can throw 40 interceptions, and what happens? Well, it's not his fault. Yeah, it's always protection. an excuse for he it. He needs right. four wide receivers and a running back and a great defense. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I think I could go in there and get behind that center and win a game or two with that kind of thing. But right. Ryan Tannehill throws the ball. I'm not going to say great, but when you put it all together, together with power, touch, um, accuracy, and then put his athletic ability in there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm telling you that you got a you got a really really good starting NFL quarterback. Right. And you know, I, I, I me, I hope it works out for him down in Tennessee. Yeah. But you know, man, like if, if Brady. So yeah. what you're trying to say right now is if you think if Brady doesn't end up in New England or doesn't stay in New England, that Tannehill might be somebody they fancy. Is that what you're trying to say right now, or are you just talking up Tannehill? Tennessee? Or, or in New England. Like, I, I would think if Brady didn't end up in New England, let's just say he ended up either in Tennessee or San Francisco, I would think that New England is going to call Ryan Tannehill, and he would be towards the top of their list as far as a quarterback. Oh, they I would acquire. think so, absolutely. Listen, he's everything they like. He right. is, you know, he's, you know, he turned into a leader this year. You know, I never saw that in Miami. Uh, just because, one, they weren't that good. The offense never really showed off his skills. Yeah, he got hurt a few times and all that. And, you know, of course, all the writers and fans in Miami, oh, Ryan Tannehill, you know, nobody knew about him when he came out, didn't think as highly of him as where he was drafted probably. And it was always his fault. And I constantly would watch the games and go, damn, he looks good to me. Right. And 
Now, I'll never forget, I've told you this before, and, you know, I don't mean to cut, but Dan Marino, I don't know when it was, maybe the second year, first year, I don't know what, he goes, hey, Phil, you know, this Tannehill can really throw. Hmm. And I go, yeah, really? No kidding. <laughs> I, I've known that. I watched it. I've seen it. Right. And I think Dan Marino was even shocked by his talent when he started watching day after day going, man, he's a machine well, every day. Yes, he so, is. Yeah, so if Tom Brady left, it wouldn't shock me at all if the Patriots came calling and see if they could they uh, could get Tannehill because I don't know what's going on down there. I guess they can franchise him, right? They could, but they got to make the decision. So they got Derrick Henry, Henry so then they'd be letting him get on the open market. So that's where it gets interesting with them and the fact that, like you know, what you're saying, and just as we're sitting here talking right now, I just wonder if the reason we haven't heard a lot of Ryan Tannehill Tennessee conversation news yet. Because I just wonder if New England has already reached out through the back channels to his representation to say, hey, put your pump the brakes. We might have some interest in here later on here in free agency. I'm just throwing that out there. I have no knowledge of that, but that is yeah. how the league works at times. It's funny. It just, po- it just popped up on my timeline here. The odds for who would replace Brady in New England if he was to yeah. leave. Yeah. Tannehill is the second highest favorite. Jimmy G is one? No, Jimmy G is down the list. Okay. Uh, Andy Dalton won. Andy Dalton is fourth highest Damn, on the list. Damn, who are we missing here? Uh, Stidham, Stidham is not here, so it must be if he leaves, who is going to – he's not one of the top. So who's won? Hurry up. Number one is Teddy Bridgewater. Wow. The betting favorite to replace Tom Brady in New England. I don't think there's any chance. No I don't, chance. I don't think Teddy Bridgewater's a New England guy. I don't. Nope. Yeah, I mean, nothing about him, first off, says he can throw the ball through weather in November, December, January. Well, he wears gloves, he's, just don't forget that. Well, exactly. So if he's wearing gloves, he can't really throw it anyways. I'm sorry, that's just my thought on the matter. If you're wearing yeah. gloves, you're, you're, you can't throw. I'm just that you're needing the glove to throw. And so that, that would, and then I don't know if they would believe in really that skill type of a player either, nor do I think he's a good enough aggressive downfield thrower. So I would, I'm shocked by that line actually right there. Yeah, Bridgewater one, Tannehill two, Marcus Mariota, the third highest betting favorite. Right. Andy Dalton. Yeah. And then, oh, there's Jarrett Stidham at five. So he is on the list. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think uh, Mariota, I don't know. I don't know if he would be their type of guy either. Uh, Again, I think he lacks arm strength. Right. Um, you know, just, yeah, just not a real that. fast decision maker. He's a decent athlete, but not nothing to like, oh, wow, we got to make sure we keep him in the pocket. Um, I think Ryan Tannehill is every bit the athlete that Marcus Mariota is, I, but he's bigger and stronger. You know, he's just stronger. Right. And that, that's one thing I notice. Plays stronger, moves quick, uh, you know, with power, all that stuff. Um, you know, so Teddy Bridgewater – yeah, he's he's a good NFL. He knows how to manage and uh, you know work a game and all that. But is he going to make wild plays? No, he is not. Right. You know, go look at all the Saints games. I watched them all, and of course they started out real slow with him, which was right to do. Right. And they ran and they just managed games to the ultimate, and then they let him go a little bit towards the end. Mm. But still, it was what you see always. It's Sean Payton. We're going to get this guy open. Just throw it to him. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it, right. Yeah. I, Brett Bridgewater is a the classic case of a guy who won't lose you a game, but he's not going to win you games either. Yeah, I, I agree with that a little bit. I do. So Gar- you know, So it'll be interesting. But everybody's very fascinated by him, and they bought in in Minnesota, and nothing's changed. And he had good success and did a great job with the Saints. Yeah. And and listen, that was a, a tremendous insurance plan they got. When they got him, and it worked out great, and re- the, once again, the Saints, they could have been a Super Bowl winner just as easy as they lost that game. Yeah, so it's, right. You know, what is that, three years in a row now? Sean Payton could be on that pedestal with Bill Belichick. Yeah, yeah. right. I know that about he's, it. He's sitting there looking for that second one once again. Right. Yeah, Garoppolo is seventh on the uh, Vegas list here, and uh, that's the fascinating discussion, and, and we talked about it a little bit on the last podcast. It's a – you can see why Tom Brady would would want to go to the 49ers. Like, why wouldn't you? Yeah, right? You got, the, you got a the, great defense. You got a Super Bowl favorite. Right, you want to go back to coach. Go back home. I guess the the question is more from the 49ers side of 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 why you would want to mess with something. I mean, you you were the 94 percent favorite to win the Super Bowl in the fourth quarter with Jimmy Garoppolo. And I guess the the one thing that I think about here, it's it's not necessarily a question of who's better, Jimmy G or Tom Brady. 
No, uh, I, it is that question. No, no, not I totally. Hear a big fig, I, well, okay, I well, hear we'll big hear that. Answer I do that. want to hear that. But okay, I but, do want to hear that because we did do a Twitter poll right now, and who do you think is better right now? And and people out there, Chris, you posted this. Fifty-eight percent thought Tom Brady is better right now, which I, I actually was a little surprising yeah, to I, me. I, I am. T- I'm. I'm a, I would agree. I thought it would be closer than that. But go ahead. And the one thought. thing I will add is is that. If you choose Tom Brady, you are getting something back for Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, what do you think you could get back for him? A first-round pick? If you trade him? I do. So if you get Tom, if you yeah. choose Tom, you get Tom. Right. And a first-round pick. No doubt. If you choose Jimmy, you just get Jimmy. Yeah. So and I mean, a team that doesn't I, I, I have a first-round pick. I think you'll get a first-round pick. You yeah, not? you don't think so? No, I do not. Too many quarterbacks in the league that are good. They're yeah. floating everywhere. Right. And, you know, let's just judge him. Let's take him away from the 49ers, their run team, their run game. All the run pass fakes and throws. Hmm. I mean, come on. You know, listen. Most of those throws, he did make some good throws in the Super Bowl. People are, I think, very unfair against him about his Super Bowl performance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he had the ball batted down. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. If he was seven foot eight and had to throw the ball to the receiver he was trying to throw to, it still would have been knocked down. Yeah. I love that. But you know, you got to throw it over the top of the defensive lineman. Now, you know, when they raise their hands, that's about eight feet. Right. So I, I don't know, you know, it's just a dumb cliche. So, yeah, so if you, dumb. so if you were to, if it's just Brady versus Garoppolo, who's better year, next year? I'm taking Brady. Yeah. Without hesitation. Yeah. Yeah, because he just, listen, he's a better. It's just this: he's a better thrower of the ball. Yeah. Tom Brady is on a good team. They got a very good line out in San Francisco. They run a lot of stuff over the middle. He's a great over the middle thrower. Right. And you know he'll hey he'll throw it down the field and they'll have those outside throws which they really liked at the end of the year. Yeah. Which I think when you we talked about this probably already, but when you watch that Super Bowl, Kansas City finally said, hey, <laughs> you're not going to throw it outside. Right. So we we'll just put everybody up here to stop your run and dare you to throw it to the guy outside. Right. So. You yeah, know, I'm with but, you too, Dad. I hear you. And I think for the 49er offense, I don't think there's any doubt that I would take Tom Brady the more I've thought about this. Really? Well, I just think Brady is a more slam dunk, better thrower of the football. Stronger arm, better spirals, better power. Everything about it, I look at it from that standpoint and go, yeah, Brady's going to be better. And then within that offense, like Kyle, like my like uh, my dad just talked about, Kyle is the master of play action, in cut over the middle, 20 yard curl over the middle, quick slant over the middle, crosser over the middle, deep post down the middle. And I think if you do that, you know, you're not asking Brady to bootleg and do stuff like that. I think Brady's, he's handmade for that. I mean, come on, that's what New England did. They call it the pop pass in New England. That's a, they're famous for it. You oh, know, yeah. play action pass, come up. Oh, there's Gronk, 15 yards over the middle. Bam, strike. You know what I mean? So I, from that standpoint, I do. I, my only question with Brady is one thing. And it's just, is he willing to stand in there and take a shot if somebody's open 20 yards downfield and there's a guy open at five yards downfield, I thought he was quick to throw the five-yard throw this year. It's my only negative with him at this point, and that's something that I think the 49ers are going to have to figure out if they're going to be comfortable with. Well, I think uh, his opportunities with the 49ers will be uh, more. Yes. The, the talent, the scheme, how they keep you so off balance. And all that, and New England does too, but in a whole different way. Yeah, it's a different way. And right. uh, I think he can run bootlegs and stuff. Look, you know, to run a bootleg pass, you don't have to be Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson. Right. You know, people. Oh, you got to be mobile to get out. Come on, you can be the you can be the slowest quarterback in the NFL and roll, run a bootleg and make the throw. Yeah. It's, it's really, truly not very difficult. And so, but you know, it's a great it's a great topic. But I'm just saying, just from that we're looking at one year, and if he plays out there, uh, look, and two, the my, my last thing, I'll keep it short. Yeah. If right. you, you know, you want to win the Super Bowl, you know, you got to be afraid. You can't be afraid. Yeah. You know, to win and to win big and win Super Bowls, you you, you got to take chances. That's right. So, New England taught uh, us that. You're right. New England yeah. taught us that. So, so, the only thing I have with that, though, is that the 49ers probably should have won that Super Bowl. And if they do win that Super Bowl, we're not even talking about this. No, right? No. If they win the Super Bowl with Jimmy G, which 95% of the time they do with a 10-point lead with seven minutes to go, sure. we're not even considering this as an option. The fact that the improbable happened and the 49ers somehow blew that lead in the Super Bowl makes this a possibility. But I, I wonder if, if we're almost overreacting to – 
to the end of that game. Yeah. I know he missed that throw to Emmanuel Sanders. And, and you can oh, also. Well, you know, listen. Uh, the, first, yeah. let me say this. Come on. He threw the ball 45 yards down the field. Everybody acts like that was a layup. Right. I mean, come on. And then I heard a stat. Oh, you know, 57% of the time, balls that traveled that far were completed. Well, yeah, because most of the time they were probably wide open with nobody around them. Right. You know, so it, it, I, I don't know. Come on. The one Every la- quarterback in the league misses that throw all the time during the year. The one last thing I'll add and I'll say, and I'll, I, I'd like to hear what you guys think about it, is let's say, you know, we keep thinking of who's going to be better in, in 2020. Let's put Brady on the 2019 49ers, mm-hmm. okay, where they had – a significant amount of the season, they were without their tackles yeah. in Staley and McGlinchey, right. sure. and their guards aren't necessarily known to be great, effective pass blockers. I think he received Brady received better pass blocking in New England than he did with the 49ers. Say you put Tom Brady on the 2019 49ers. Right. Are we sure that that's a team that earns a first round buy and is 13 and three? Isn't that what they finish? Yeah. I mean, right. do we do we think that they are better? in 2019 than they were with Jimmy Garoppolo. I I do. I you think do. they do. Yes. I think I think we do, I do. I think right, we're we're teetering on the line though that we're not being able to say that a whole much longer. You know, sure. again the one thing I'll continue to say is Jimmy Garoppolo it is his first year as a starter. He's going to get a little better. And now how much better? A little better, a lot better, I don't know, right? You know, you hear rumors that, you know, like Florio and I don't know who was it, Tom Curran made comments that, you know, the Shanahan's told people that he thinks he's ma- reached his max and he doesn't know if the ceiling's a whole lot higher. So that's got to go into this decision, too. And to your overreacting thing, hey, listen, I understand your overreacting thing, too. The other thing that I think, you know, you, we got to take into account here, we haven't heard the 49ers come out and squash this rumor yet. I mean, it'd be very easy for any of them to come up and go, we're, we're, Jimmy Garoppolo's our quarterback. We're not doing anything they with Tom Brady. They have said that, I think. Well, he Jimmy talked about Jimmy had a great year last year at the Combine. They said a lot of positive things. But if they really wanted to squash this, they could come out right now and squash it. And to me, the fact that that hasn't, hasn't happened shows you a little bit that there must be something there. Again, where there's smoke, there's fire. You know, and, and my, my other point to all this is a little different. You know, you look at the playoffs. And, you know, I, I will say this. I thought Kyle and that they, they put him in some tough situations. In other words, there is no reason to throw the ball eight times when you're destroying the other team. Right. You throw the ball to give your quarterbacks more reps, more confidence, and not everybody talk about leading up the Super Bowl. You only threw eight passes in yeah. that championship game. Right. And, you know, and he should have thrown more. They could have and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm just a big believer. You always keep the quarterback in rhythm during football games. Yeah. So, so that was that was tough. They did it really all of them, and you know maybe a little more. They were a little more open in the uh, Super Bowl, throwing the slants over the middle, things like that. And um, but you know, so that that was tough on him. They would not do that with. Well, I don't know why they did it. Sometimes, uh, if Tom Brady was a quarterback or some, I, I, I it just they wouldn't have pulled back that much. So that. That kind of told me a little something. Last you know. thing, and you got to go because I know you got to right. you got to travel, and we'll, we'll yes. be done with it. If you were Tom Brady in year twenty, and you've played in one, you know, same same system for twenty years, you know, what's your thought about finally having to go somewhere else and have to learn a whole new language and offense and playbook and everything? Well. Um, I, listen, I think um, – Were you intimidated by that, like, late in your career? Like, when you thought about going to the Browns, to the Jags, were you like, oh, damn, I'm going to have to learn a whole new playbook and all that crap? Not at all. All right. Not at all. Yeah. Well, I couldn't wait to do it. And then the – just – I had Dan Reeves my last year. You're talking about a right. completely different verbiage yeah. and everything. I was like, wow, we used to say five words for a pass. Now I'm saying 23 words for a run. <laughs> right. Just one run. And – but it, it, that part of it was really fun, you know, to see how fast you could learn it and, you know, do these things. And I remember Dan Reeves, he had this one play that to throw it outside. You know, we were, for all those years, I had Mark Babarl, Zeke Bullwatt, Lee Rousson come out of the backfield. We ran seams like five times a game, and right. you know that. Right. Well, Dan Reeves wanted me to throw it outside when the guys were running seams. And we beat the Washington Redskins, I don't know what it was, I'm going to say week five or six. Yep. And he's, we're getting dressed and he's standing next to me. He was shaving. I was just, I don't know what I was doing. And he goes, all right, I give up. And I said, what do you mean you give up? Hell, I'm going to design 
about 10 different ways every week for you to throw those damn seams because you seem to hit them all, so we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, because you hit a lot in that week five Redskin game you're talking about. What, what? You hit a lot of them in that game down in Washington, D.C. Yeah. You hit a few seam yeah. routes, right? Well, that's when he said it. He goes, yeah. all right, I give up. You're yeah. right. We're going to do it. I'm just going to put – and, you know, he was very clever. We did hit a lot of them with him, and he started doing it with wide receivers and motion and things like that, which were really good and all that, so it worked out well. But So I think going to a new atmosphere, yeah, it will, especially when you're changing teams and system, It's a there's a little nerves involved. But also, it's invigorating, and I'll tell you, he won't he won't mind OTAs because he's going to be in there grinding, having right. fun, learning. Oh my God, I didn't know you could do this. This is a cool play. Right. Wish we'd have done this. So all those things, I think, are that wouldn't worry me. And Tom Brady, come on, we know he's very smart. Yep. They have a complicated offense. He knows everything about it, and he'll do this. If he does go somewhere else, he'll learn it just like he did in New England. Yeah. All right, man. You the so. man. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.